Now here I will talk about a new topic. In order to be used by God, first we need to live in the love of God and obey God's law. But it's very important to take care of problems in our life, and the most important one first is about sins. Na ni vizuri sana tujiangalie sana katika maisha yetu kitu cha kwanza ni kuchunguza moyo wako zile dhambi za siri zinazo kuzuia kumtumikia Mungu. So now I will talk about how to overcome sins. Sasa tutazungumzia jinsi ya kushinda shetani ni dhambi. Because sins will give a foothold to devil, to the devil. Kwa sababu dhambi itapeana mwanya kwa shetani. There are many people reviving the uh, you know, by the work of the Holy Spirit, but they fell into sin and then they became a uh, stumbling block to other people. And when people live in sin, they will not be able to have a close relationship with God. And then uh, the one uh, one, one time you ask me questions about bishops or pastors who have sinned, and so this is a real problem. Now bishops and pastors have their problem. That means many Christians also have their problem. Na pia hata nyinyi ambao mnaopeana maswali pia mnashida. After experience of having a scope na mchungaji akiwa na shida, vile vile washirika wake watakuwa na shida. Okay. Say that. A mchungaji wakiwa na shida wakiwa usinifu wa sharati. Kanisa lote litakuwa na shida ya usinifu na usharati. Amen. Hawezi kutoa amu hata wewe. Okay. Now, so I want to share that in 1998, after experience of the Holy Spirit, God moved my heart to be sensitive, to be very sensitive to my sins. Mungu aliweza kumwelekeza katika moyo wake katika roho kuwa mwangalifu na kuelewa dhambi zake. And God guided me to be very sensitive to the sins and take care of the sins. Mungu akawa anamuelekeza jinsi ya kuelewa dhambi za ndani zilizokuwa ndani mwake. And I find that that way I can live in peace and joy and strength. Leo alitamboa kwamba akitubu zile dhambi ama akitamboa hizo dhambi anaweza kuishi katika maisha ya amani. And at the same time, I have seen many people around me who experience the Holy Spirit. I saw many of them were down and with weakness and sins. And don't have much motivation to serve God. And they cannot be used by God greatly. My motivation was I can experience God so wonderfully, and I can pray for people to experience God, and God gave me such wonderful teachings. Na hisia zake ni kwamba mungu amempa ile hali ya kupenda na anapodumu anasaidia wengi kupenda kutamani kumtumikia mungu. I want to make the best of the gifts of God so I can bless more people. I hope that you all have this heart. We don't want sins to hinder us. Now it's very important for us to realize that we cannot despise God. To know the seriousness of sins. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 and 
Wakanatia sita mstari Okay. Now, wakanatia sita mstari wa saba na nani? Peru says that do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Or God, we cannot despise God. Neno la mungu linasema usijidanganyishe mungu siyo wakutharauliwa. For whatever a man sow, that he will also reap. Na kile upandacho, nicho utakacho vuna. Whoever sows to please his flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. Yeyote atakajipenda ataridi uwaribifu. And whoever sows to please the Holy Spirit, from the Holy Spirit will reap eternal life. Yeyote ambaye atapendeza romta katifu katika ufame, katika maisha ya utene, ataridi ataridi utene. So we cannot despise God. Kwa watuwezi kumdarao mungu. Now Paul also talked about that he as a, dis, uh, as a disciple of Jesus, he will be like on a, a show to all people and all angels to see his life. Kwevo, Paolo anapo udumu, anasema ya kwamba yei atakuwa barua na kila mtu afate mfano wake. And Jesus said also by our idle words, it will prove that we are righteous or, or sinful. Na pia tokapoenda mbele za Mungu hesabu yako itahesabiwa kama ulikuwa upande wa Mungu ama ulikuwa upande wa shetani. So it's very important that we realize that sins are very very destructive. Nataka tuelewe ya kwamba kanisani ya kwamba dhambi ni kitu kibaya katika kanisa. Let me tell you I have to say I have given in to sins many times in my life. I have given in. I have, you know, given in to sins many times in my life. Because I just thought, well, after I sin, I ask God to forgive me, He'll forgive me. And I'm sure that many Christians think like that. Wakristo wengi ama wanduku na wadada wengi huwa sahifo. When I sin, I just ask God to forgive, and He'll forgive me, and it's over. And I want to say, yes, God will forgive us. But there is always a consequence of sins. In John chapter 5, verse 14. Yohana mlangu wa tano mstari wa kumna ile. Yohana mlangu wa tano mstari wa kumna ile. There was a man who had 38 years of sickness and he could not walk. Na mtu ambaye alikuwa miaka salasina nane kama asimani. And Jesus healed him and he could walk again. Mtu yeso alimponya na katembea tena. And then Jesus said to him, you're well again now. Na kini yeso akamambia sasa uko sao. Stop sinning or something worse will happen to you. Yes, so akamambia kwamba uwache dhambi ama ukitenda dhambi tena utapoosa vile uliyokuwa. And I want to say any sin will bring destruction. Taka kuambia kwamba dhambi yoyote hata iwe ndogo ama kubwa italeta shida katika maisha yako na uzao wako. Even if we dislike someone hata kama uta uta chukia uta chukia mwenzako it will break destruction italeta shida now on the first day we talk about how we should talk to our spouse and the people around us siku ya kwanza tulisumumzia jindi ya kwanza kusumumzia wake zetu familia zetu na wenditu now the most important thing why people would talk roughly to people is because we have a sinful nature of anger and despise of people Na kwa nini mtu sumumuza tu bila kujali ni kwa sababu tumetoka kwa adamu amba ya lietenda dhambi na pia ile semu ya dhambi iko na limuetu kiyo tunakuwa na ile asira tukionge. It's easy for us to see the negative signs of people that even when people are simple it doesn't mean that we will treat them badly. Ni raisi sana wewe kuona dhambi ya mwenzako lakina wezi kuona dhambi yako lakini si vizuri sisi so we look at the negative signs and then we get angry and we cannot forgive and everything we dislike them. 
Kwa hivyo tunaangalia makosa ambayo mtu amefanya na kila wakati tunawachukia na hatuwataki karibu na sisi. So my question for you is think about your feeling toward your spouse or family members do you have dislike or hatred toward them? Kwa hivyo fikiria kwamba mawazo yako juu ya mke wako juu ya jamii yako vile unavyofikiria. Many people would allow this dislike or hatred stay in their hearts. Wengi wetu tunabaki na zile vikwaso na ule uchungu zinakuwa katika mioyo yetu. But we might say well he is bad he has many bad things that's why I'm angry with him. Na sisi tutasema ya kwamba yeye amefanya dhambi nyingi sana yeye ni mbaya na sasa ndio kwa sababu nina hiyo hasira namtukia. The point is what does Jesus teach us? Swali ni kwamba Yesu anatufundisha nini? Does Jesus teach us to hate those who hate us? Je, Yesu anatufundisha tuchukie wale wanaotuchukia? Jesus teaches us to repay wickedness with goodness. Yesu anaendelea kusema ya kwamba yani tenda mazuri kwa ule anayekutendea mabaya. Even if they are bad, hata wao ni wabaya kwa njia gani? But if I'm gentle to them and kind to them, eh waende katika hali ya upendo katika hali ya uungwana. Gradually I can guide them to change. Pole pole hatua baada ya hatua huyo Yesu atawabadilisha. Even if they don't change hata kama hawezi kubadilika my life will still be a good testimony to the world maisha yako yatakuwa na ushuhuda mzuri sana mahali unapoishi ni kwa dunia pia but most people don't think that that is a sin lakini wengi wetu hatuoni hiyo kuwa ni dhambi ya kuchukia mtu when they have dislike for the family members Uh, unapokuwa umechukia mtoto ama mke wako ama mtu yeyote katika familia majamii Let me ask you here kuna swali hapo Is there anyone here you don't have any dislike for your family members Is there anyone here kuna, you really like every you know you really like your family members you always nice to them Je kuna yote hapa anaweza kusema kwamba yeye yeah, anapenda jamii yake makosa ile yote wanafanya yeye yeah, hajali anawapenda mmoja tu ajitokeze is anyone here you even though they are bad you still like them and you bless them and you are nice to them is anyone always like that hata uh, wanapofanya makosa una unaangalia uh, hauoni yale makosa unaendelea kuwasumbuzia vizuri na kuwapenda na pia kuwabariki no because of our sinful nature ni kwa sababu ya ile maumbili ya dhambi our sinful nature want to be angry with people maumbili yetu ya ya dhambi yanataka tuwe na hasira na wenzetu our sinful nature is to repay wickedness with wickedness maumbili yetu ya dhambi ile ni ya kulipisha kisasi does that destroy our life hiyo sinaharibu maisha yetu it will make our family full of fights and quarrels hiyo itafanya jamii kuwa katika hali ya vita na ugomvi. Our family will not have the peace of God. Jamii zetu hazitakuwa na amani ya Mungu. We will have a good testimony in front of our family members and our children. Hatutakuwa na ushuhuda mzuri mbele ya jamii zetu na mbele ya watoto wetu. And let's say that we accuse us because of this sin. Na pia shetani atatuhukumu kwa sababu ya hiyo dhambi. What I'm saying is any negative thinking or feeling will take away our peace and our love with God. Nasumuzia kwamba kitu chochote ambacho utakachochukia kwa watu wako kinatoa ile amani na ule uhusiano na Mungu. Can we become aware when I dislike my family members or other people is my sin. Tufikie mahali ambapo ambapo tuwe kama mtu eh ambapo usiwe wa kukosea yani unapokosea eh, jamii eh, jamii yako wewe unatenda dhambi and it can destroy my life na inaweza kuharibia maisha now also now we're talking about different sins that people don't think is sin tunasumbulia zile dhambi ambazo tunazichukua tu kwa kawaida one is dislike of people yeye ni kutukia wenzako despise of people Uh, kusengenya wenzako ama kusarao unawasumbuzia kwa ukali na another area that many people don't think that they are sins are wengine wetu hawajui kwamba wana wanaelewa hizo ni dhambi the negative emotion they say i'm unhappy i'm sad ile kinyume ya kusumbuzia kinyume mimi siko sina furaha they think that this is not sin 
Wanaona ni kama hiyo sio dhambi. They say the people around us are bad so I'm unhappy. Wanasema ya kwamba wale watu wamenizingira ni wapaya kwa hivyo mimi sina amani. The Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Biblia inasema ya kwamba kila mmoja wetu ametenda dhambi na akapungukiwa na utukufu wa Mungu. So when we fall short of the glory of God we have sinned. E, tunakuwa na ile kupungukiwa na utukufu wa Mungu kwa sababu tumetenda dhambi. Every Christian, if every Christian is always sad, unhappy or angry, does that glorify God? E, kila mtu ambapo wakati ako na asira, ana ujungu, je, hiyo inapatia Mungu utukufu? Or many Christians are weak, does it glorify God? Na Wakristo wengi wao ni wadhaifu, je, hiyo inapatia Mungu utukufu? Will that show people we are godly people? Je, hiyo katika mahali utakapokuwa itaonyesha wenyeji ya kwamba wewe ni mtu wa Mungu. So from this verse, we fall short of the glory of God. Any time we fall short of the glory of God, we are sinning. Eh, nasema kwamba wakati wote tunapokungukiwa na utukufu wa Mungu, tunakuwa tunatenda dhambi. Think of the saints in heaven. How are the saints in heaven? Eh, waza kuhusu wapendwa kule mbinguni wako namna gani? They will be rejoicing all the time and they're full of the love of God. And they can forgive each other already in heaven totally. They are showing the glory of God. Anytime we are not like them, we are falling short of the glory of God. Yote ambaye hakui kama wale unapungukiwa na utukufu wa Mungu. But many people will say this is too hard. Wengi wetu tutasema kwamba ah hii ni ngumu sana. Everyone has sinned. Kila mtu ametenda dhambi. So we cannot overcome our sins. Kwa hivyo hatuwezi kushinda dhambi. Now I want to say this. First thing we realize sins are terrible. Na mbapo kitu cha kwanza tunataka tujia kwamba dhambi ni ni hatari. Any small sins in our heart is going to destroy our life. Dhambi yoyote itakayokuwa katika nafsi yako moyo wako roho yako kwa nyama na damu inaharibu maisha yako. For instance you think of a powerful evangelist. Eh pengine unafikiria mtumishi wa Mungu mwingilishi anayefanya muingiza na ishara. And then he dislikes his wife. Na huyo mwingilishi amechukia mke wake. By the way I want to say that I went to many places I found that many pastors or evangelists do not have a good relationship with the wife. Vile anavyotembea anakuta kwamba sisi watumishi wa Mungu wachungaji na waingilishi na viongozi hatupendi wake zetu. Because they are used to being a boss in a church. Kwa sababu unapokuwa kanisani wewe ni mkubwa. And then when they go home and tell why do this do that and the wife disobeys. Na wanapoenda nyumbani yebira no msazo wali tala papo wali tala yenyo wamuri siyo mwasi uwe fanya hii fanya hii And then he would dislike the wife Na laano mwasa aloba no ojako umusisha And also in the church many people really like this evangelist or pastor Watu wengi wanapenda hawa waichilisti ama wachungaji And people say pray for me pray for me pray for me Wanakuja wanakuja mbio kwa maombi niombe niombe but the wife doesn't respond like that. The wife might say, "Mo, I don't like how you relate to the woman." Na, sipendi wewe ndugu yangu. I don't like how you relate to the woman. Na, sipendi wewe ndugu yangu vile unausika na wakina mama kanisa. I don't like how you, you know, sometimes when you preach, I think some of the things you say are not the truth. Sipendi wakati unapohudumu maneno mengine unayoongea si ya ukweli. And the evangelist doesn't like that. Na lakini mwingilisti hapendi hivyo. Everyone submits to me but my wife doesn't. Hello? Everyone submits to me but my wife doesn't. Kila neno ambalo anazungumza mkao hataki. Kila mtu ananifurahia. Oh, kila mtu ananifurahia na mtu hataki. So hapo hataki. When they cannot handle this negative feeling, what happens is they have anger inside them. Okay, kama hawezi kufanya hii hali ya kutokubaliana na mke wake inamaanisha yeye pia ana ile asira. They have given Satan a big foothold in their life. Umepatia shetani nafasi kubwa katika maisha yako wewe mchungaji. Or some evangelists or some pastors just want people to give more money. 
Wachungaji wengine na waingilisi wengine wanapenda sana toa shilingi 1000 kwa pesa mingi. Or they try to steal people from other churches. Na wanaiba watu kutoka kwa makanisa mengine. Or they want people really to submit to them without condition. Na wanataka wale wapendwa ama pale kanisani wapendwa wao wanawainamia. Now the Bible does talk about submission. Uh, Biblia haisemi uh, Biblia haisemi kutia ina hiyo. Okay. Biblia haisemi kutia ina hiyo. Submission doesn't mean that whatever you say you have to listen obey don't ever talk back. Eh eh kutii hakumaanishi ya kwamba kile naongea utii na ufanye. And in the epistle of Peter, Peter talk about do not control the sheep of God. Eh katika barua ya Petro inasema ya kwamba usielekeze yani usishawishi eh, kondoo za Mungu but be a good example to them lakini kuwa mfano mzuri but many pastors think they are kings lakini wachungaji wengi wanafikiria na mabishop na waingilisti hawa ndio wafalme if you don't obey me then you're not obeying god usikonitii hautii Mungu that is not biblical hiyo sio biblia What I'm saying is when we let sins come to our life in ways we don't think they are sins. Eh kila anasema kwamba vile vitu vinakuja kuwa kama dhambi ambavyo tunaona sio dhambi. It will do damage to the life of the person. Vitaharibu maisha yangu na maisha yako ndugu. So do you agree that any way that we fall short of the glory of God this will destroy our life? Unakubaliana na mimi ya kwamba wakati wote tunapopungukiwa na utukufu wa Mungu eh, kuna kuwa na uharibifu katika maisha yetu. Or any sins like adultery, eh, dhambi kama usinifu, greed for women, eh, kusalamia eh, tamaa ya wa, ya wakina mama. When they see a beautiful woman or a beautiful body, they keep their eyes on them. Ho, oh, yaangalia maumbile ya kina dada macho yako yanaelekea tu kwa hawa hauangalii kando or you have extra marital relationship ama wewe una watu wawili watatu yani una mke mmoja na umeficha watatu kule nje now if they repent and really turn away the sin God will forgive them ndio ikiwa utakubali mchungaji kama mimi utuku dhambi zako kuhusu usinifu na usharati Mungu anaweza kukusamehe but the point is the sins will have serious destruction to his life. Ni kile unataka kujue ni kwamba hiyo dhambi itakupiga vita na itakuwa na uharibifu katika maisha yako. And some of this destruction are not reversible. Na hiyo uharibifu nyingine haiwezi tena ikawa sawa. You know we still have chances after we repent. Ndio tuna nafasi baada ya kutubu. But there could be one day there is no more chance. Lakini siku nyingine unaweza jikuta ndugu yangu Bwana amekuchukua hakuna nafasi. I know pastors that have committed serious sin and they cannot serve as a pastor anymore. No more chance. Eh kama mchungaji aliyefanya dhambi anajua baadhi ya wachungaji ambao wamewahi tenda dhambi na hiyo dhambi kaweka chini hawajawahi kutumikia Mungu tena. Okay. Kuna wale wachungaji ambao washa a, anawajua wala washafanya dhambi. Dhambi ya usharati ama usinifu. Na hiyo dhambi ikawaweka chini. Kule kutoka pale tena kuamuka kuwa mchungaji wa kuhubiri kwa nguvu na uweza ni vigumu. And also for anyone when we have a divorce the marriage is already destroyed. Ha. Pia kama unapatia mke wako talaka hiyo ndoa imeharibika. Even if we repent, there is still consequence of this divorce to the whole family. Hata kama utatubu, utakuwa na uharibifu juu ya hii ndoa hata kama utatubu. So, Madara. So can we all agree that sins are destructive? Can we agree? Tukubaliane kwamba dhambi ni uharibifu. And also any time we fall short of glory of God we are already sinning. Ah eh wakati wote ambao tunapungukiwa na utukufu wa Mungu sisi wote tunatenda dhambi. And then James chapter 2 verse 10. Yakobo mlango wa pili mstari wa 
Whoever keeps the whole law and yet stumble on one, he has is guilty of breaking all the law, all of it. Yes, unaweza kuishi maisha matakatifu, lakini ukifunya tu sheria moja, wewe umekuwa mwenye dhambi. Kwa hivyo hakuna dhambi ndogo wala kubwa dhambi ni dhambi. For instance, if someone just dislikes someone, kwa mfano mtu kama hatapenda mwenzake, this dislike is going to make it make it hard for him to love this person. He hali itakufanya kuwa na usito sana wa kumpenda mwenzako. Pengine aliua mtoto wako na mbaya kule msata huko. This dislike also make it hard for him to have a good relationship with God. He hali inakufanya kuwa ngumu hata kuwa na uhusiano mzuri na Mungu. What I'm saying is, a lot of dislike in the heart is going to destroy our spiritual life, our family life, and our relationship with God. So breaking one commandment means we break all the commandments because it will destroy the whole life. It's like you put some germs into some food, some germs. The germ is not just going to affect the little part of the food, but it affect the whole, the, all the food there. Lakini ule uchafu utaharibu chakula chote. Have you seen people have greed for money and destroy his whole spiritual life? Ushaona wale watu wanatamaa ya pesa wakina dada, wakiona wanaume walio na pesa mingi, anawakimbilia tu ameokoka tu kijana, anaanguka katika ukufu. Or someone has, you know, greed for women and then it destroy his whole life too. Ama yule katika kanisani utakuta mpendwa ambaye yeye kazi yake umhasi shambura ta umhasi yenyewe hasia so the first thing is to realize that any sin will destroy our whole life kile tunataka tujia kwamba kila dhambi itaharibu maisha yetu now okay now so we have heard this morning i just said how serious sins are and how destructive sins are and how it destroy the whole life kwa hivyo tunazungumzia kuhusu jinsi kuna uharibifu wa dhambi katika maisha yetu and also any you know uh, any way that we have fallen short of the glory of God is already a sin. And now I will talk about how to overcome sins. Sasa nataka kusungumzia jinsi ya kushinda dhambi. I want to say that in all my teachings is something I have gone through myself. I have gone through weak times of weakness that I find it hard to overcome my sins. But the infilling of the Holy Spirit gives me much motivation to handle my sins. Lakini kule kujazwa ndani na Roho Mtakatifu inaendelea kumtia nguvu na kumshawishi kushinda nani. And in the process God has taught me how to do it. Na pia Mungu anamfundisha jinsi ya kufanya. That's the benefit of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Hiyo ndio faida ya kujazwa na Roho Mtakatifu. The Holy Spirit gives us strength and teaches us how to do it. Hey, Roho Mtakatifu anatutia nguvu na pia anatupa anatufundisha jinsi ya kushinda okay. au kufundisha. First Romans Romans chapter 8 verse 7. Verse 37. Uh, warumi mlango wa 8 mstari wa 37. In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Katika hayo yote sisi ni zaidi ya washindi kupitia yeye anayetupenda. Kupitia yeye anayetupenda. So in all these things, with the love of God, with Christ who loves us, we can be conquerors. Katika haya yote kupitia Yesu anayetupenda, sisi ni zaidi ya washindi. So how can we overcome sins? Je, tunaweza shinda dhambi namna gani? And God has shown me how he helped me to overcome my sins. Mungu amemuonyesha 
jinsi ya kushinda dhambi and God has given me a five steps to victory you can write this down five Amen. steps to victory ushindi the first step is to be aware of our sins no matter how small it is okay jambo la kwanza ni kuelewa njia ama ufahamu dhambi zako so first is aware uelewe and the second is believing that it's destructive uamini kwamba ni uharibifu any sin is destructive dhambi yoyote ni uharibifu sinning is like putting your head in the fire Utenda nami ni kama kuweka mkono wako ndani ya tanuri ya moto. Sinning is like putting ourselves in the hell. Hello? Sinning is like putting ourselves in the hell. Okay. Utenda nami ni kujiweka sisi wenyewe katika jehanamu. And number three, Tatu. What does the Bible say? Biblia inasema nini? So someone dislike me, what should I do? What does the Bible tell me to do? Okay. Kama Biblia inasema nini? Kama mtu hakupendi, wewe ufanye nini? The Bible tells me to forgive and to repay wickedness with goodness. Eh, Biblia inasema kwamba umsamee na pia ulipishe ubaya kwa uzuri. The Bible tells, tells me not to have lust. Biblia inasema kwamba usiwe uh, usiwe na tamaa. And then number four, ile Pray for forgiveness and pray for strength. Omba kwa kwa omba upewe kusamee na pia omba upewe nguvu. And number five, choose to obey. Number five, uwe wa kuti. Now it sounds very simple. Now I can't come and raise time. The key point to this is, I know that sins are destructive. Kitu cha muhimu ambacho nataka na ujue ni kwamba zambi. The motivation to overcome sins came from a few factors. You can write this down. The few motivation. How we can have motivation to overcome sins. We shall wish about as a idea we should have done. Number one is God loves me so much, and God is all the blessings. Ya kwanza ni kwamba mungu na ni penda sana na mungu na ni pa para kazoote. And number two, my life is very precious if I follow God. Na ya pili ya kwamba maisha yangu ni mazuri sana ikiwa nitampenda Mungu, ama maisha yangu ni ya dhamana sana nikimpenda Mungu. And number three, if I obey God, my life will go higher and higher. Na ya tatu, ikiwa nitampenda Mungu, maisha yangu yataenda yatapanda, na yatapanda, na yatapanda, na yatapanda umbeleni. And number four, if I fall in sin, There will be destruction, more and more destruction to my life. Yeah, in a, he do a tangukia dambi, he don't talk about what it be for, now we're all what it be for me, he can't come in shop. So the motivation for us to overcome sins are first, God loves us and he has all the blessings that I'm repeating now, I'm repeating now. And my life can be very precious if I follow God. If I obey God, my life will go higher and higher. I'll get, I have more blessings. But if I stay in sin, there will be more and more destruction. And the worst destruction is losing salvation and going to hell. Na ile kuwa katika uharibifu ni kupoteza wokovu na kuingia katika uharibifu. Okay, now I go back to the five steps to victory. Sasa narudi zile sehemu tano za ushindi. So we have the motivation to say my life is very precious I don't want to lose my life. Nataka na tuseme kwamba maisha yangu ni ya dhamana sana sasa kuyapoteza. How do we do it? Je, tofanya vipi? For instance, if I find that someone is not nice to me and I have negative feelings toward that person, I'm aware I have negative feelings for that person. Fano ni kwamba kama kuna mtu ambaye simpende na mchukia. The first thing I'm aware and then I will say this is destructive. If I don't like it, it will destroy my spiritual life. Kisha kwanza ni kwamba unafahamu. Kwa hivyo utajiambia kwamba nisipompenda hii itaniharibia maisha yangu ya kiroho. So that's number two. I know it's destructive. Eh ujia kwamba ni uharibifu. And what does the Bible tell me to do? Najua kile Biblia inaniambia kufanya. The Bible tells me to have compassion on them and and forgive them and bless them. Eh Biblia inaniambia kwamba niwe na huruma kwao, niwasamee na pia niwabariki. 
God has given me a key, a way to forgive. Mungu amenipa ufunguo, njia ya kuweza kusamehe. I find it very helpful. Naona ni msaada sana. Anyone, any person who hurts us, they have been hurt by people many times. Wale watu ambao unaona wanatukasirisha, pia nao wamekasirishwa na wengine ama wameumizwa na wengine. Let me ask you, do you know someone who always talk angrily and always talk roughly to people? Je, una mtu yeyote ambaye usimumzia katika hasira, ni yeye uongee pasipo kujali, unamjua mtu yeyote? Do you know someone like that? Unamjua mtu yeyote wa aina hiyo? Now these people actually they have been mistreated by many people since childhood. Hao watu kitazama maisha yao wali wamefanywa madhara sana tangu utoto wao. People have yelled at them or beat them or done uh, have done different bad things to them. Watu wamewapigia kelele, wengine wamewanajisi, wengine wakawasumuzia ubaya wakiwa wadogo. So their only way to re relate to people is to yell at people and to be angry with people. Kwa hivyo wamekuwa na mazoea kwamba wakitaka kuhusiana nawe, kukuongea na wewe ndio kuidhura, ndio kunyeka, yeye ndio hiyo ndio amani yake. So these people actually are living a miserable life. Ukweli ni kwamba hao watu wanaishi maisha ya kuhuzunika. They don't, they don't have real friends. They have a problem in relating to people. They cannot be used by God. And some of them will lose their salvation. So we say, he, his life is really miserable. Kwa hivyo tukasema kwamba maisha yake ni ya uzuri sana. So I have compassion on this person. Kwa hivyo nina huruma kwa huyu mtu. And say he's more miserable than I. Huyu mtu ana uzuri, yani ninamhuzunikia sana, ana uzuri kuliko mimi. Because of the salvation of God, I, I can have the joy of the Lord. And uh, baada ya ukovu wa Mungu, naweza kuwa ninakuwa uh, juu. But this person is suffering. So I can say this person is miserable, I can kind of compassion on the person. And then I can learn to forgive the person. Now let me tell you, God has spoken to me many times when I'm washing dishes or walking. I'll tell you how. Just say. Mungu amemzungumzia kuhusu hata kuosha vyombo. Okay. Mungu ameweza kumzungumzia ama anakupa mfano ya kwamba katika hali uliyo ndani sio kwamba uwe na mahali special place ndio Mungu asungumze na wewe. Kwa hivyo hata akiwa anatembea hata ukiwa unalima Mungu anaweza ongea na wewe. So when I walk washing dishes or walking on the street or sometimes praying. Kwa hivyo anapokuwa anaosha vyombo akitembea kwa barabara anatembea kiomba. God let me think of a person who has hurt me. Na anaambia Mungu nikumbushe yule mtu ambaye amenikosea. Oh God let me think of how I mistreated someone. Ama Mungu nikumbushe yule ambaye nimemkosea. And then in the process I pray to God, Lord help me to really forgive the person. Na katika ile hali ananyenyekea anaambia Mungu nisaidie ili nipate kumsamehe huyo. To have compassion on him and to be nice to him. Ili niwe na huruma na pia nimpendeze, nimpende. It's not just one time. Hiyo si mara moja. God brought the memory of the person again and again to me. Mungu anamletea kumbukumbu ya huyo mtu mara kwa mara. Now for many people when they think of this person person they hate the person lakini wengine wetu unapokuwa na ile kumkumbu sasa hasira ndio inapanda unamtukia but for me i have the motivation to handle any kind of dislike or hatred lakini kwa yeye ana njia yote ya kuweza kushinda chochote ambacho kinakuja kuwa ni shida kwa maisha yake so i keep praying ask God to give me strength to have compassion on that person and to bless the person kwa hivyo endelea kuomba na kuwa na ule huruma kwa ule mtu And many times God also brought to my memory how sometimes I spoke in an impolite way to people. Okay, so zingine Mungu pia umletea kumbukumbu anapoongea katika hali ya uungwana kwa wengine. And then God reminded me next time if that happens again how to speak gently. 
Ah pia Mungu anamkumbusha hiyo tena ikitendeka utakapokuwa ukiongea ongea katika hali ya upendo na uungwani. So the fire the Holy Spirit was trying to let his teaching sink into my mind so I handle these problems through the work of the Holy Spirit. Kwa hiyo utakuta ya kwamba eh, Roho Mtakatifu anaendelea kumfundisha na hayo mambo yanaingia ndani mwake na yanakuwa ndani mwake. In the process I pray to God for forgiveness and for strength. Eh, katika hali nyingine anaomba maombi kwa Mungu ya kusamee na pia ya nguvu. And I also rejoice in the Lord. Na pia anafurahia mbele za Bwana. The Lord is good. Bwana ni Bwana ni mzuri. When I forgive people God is very happy and Oh, ninaposamea watu Mungu ni, ni mzuri hapo na furaha. And I can let go of this past events. I can let go of this past okay, event. I vile vitu it doesn't matter that these people have mistreated me. Haijalishi huyu mtu alinikosea. No big problem. Ha, kuna shida. I don't have to hold on to the memory. Asitaki nishikilie ile kumbukumbu ya wale waliyonikosea. What they've said what they've done is already long gone. Ah, yale wamenisumumuzia katile na umuyeka kataika nyalogurusi ya mashinuta. I can let go and I'll rejoice in the Lord. Unawachilie inaenda na unakuwa katika uwepo wa Bwana. So that I'm filled with the joy and love for people. Ili nijazo na ile furaha na upendo wa watu. Instead of any negative feelings. Baada ya kuwa na ile kuwa na kinyume na hali ya kinyume na wengine. I want to say that some of these people are still mistreating me now this today. Nataka kukuambia kwamba hao watu unaowasamee au hata nawasamee pia tena wanaendelea muadhibu ama kumtesa hata hivi sasa. But I said it doesn't matter because I seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness all these things will be added to me. Anasema haijalishi anatafuta kwanza uh, ufalme wa mbinguni na hizo ni zote zingine zitamfuata. That person cannot take away the blessings of God from me. Huyo mtu anayekutukia hawezi chukua baraka za Mungu kwako. But if I'm angry I will take away the blessings of God from me. So I want to choose to obey God in every single way in my life. Now I want to say that I still have bad thoughts come to my mind once in a while. I still have bad thoughts come to my mind Sometimes. Uh, I want to say everyone has bad thoughts come to our mind. Because we all have a sinful nature. So when we have sinful thoughts, don't say, oh, I know you, so I cannot do it. Kwa hivyo unapofikia mahali unawaza vibaya umasai usifikirie sasa hawezi tumkiwa na Mungu. But immediately we stop the sin while the sin is in our mind. Lakini tutakaposimama kutenda eh tutakapowacha kutenda dhambi wakati hiyo dhambi iko ndani ya mawazetu. The key to overcome the sin is when the sin first appear, take care of it. Wewe ufunguo ni kwamba wakati hiyo dhambi inapokuja ifunge. I use an illustration. If I see a very beautiful girl or a sexy girl, <laughs> now many people would they would find it hard to keep the eyes away from the girl. They would keep thinking about the girl. But as soon as I notice I have any thought of lust toward the woman, or just thinking, wow, she's beautiful. Oh, kufikiria kia kwamba huyo manadada ni mrembo sana. Immediately I will handle it. Na sima ashikiria hiyo wazi. I don't treat her just as a beautiful person. Aha, chukuli tu sasa huyo manadada kuwa mrembo. I treat her as a creation of God. And I immediately remove any of these negative thoughts. And at the same time, I would thank God that God has worked in my life to teach me. And I also believe, you know, the interactive 
action that I talk about that when I do this, I know God is happy with me. So anytime I overcome the sins, God is very happy and I can be happy with myself. I always keep myself in a positive way of thinking. Because I treasure God so much. I don't want any sin to take away the blessing. Let me share with you some instances how God spoke to me about little sins. One time we had a group of pastors sharing. When I heard some of them sharing of some pastors, I said, Well, that's great. He's doing a great job. Okay, But one pastor once he shared. What he shared was very commonplace, or the work is not really great. And I sensed that this pastor was not revived. And I had despised of this pastor. Immediately, God spoke to me. Immediately, God spoke to me. Okay. Who are you to condemn him? Who are you to condemn him? His life was changed by me, by, by God. And your life is also changed by me. Who are you to judge another person? And immediately I say, Lord, Please forgive me. And I choose to respect what he has said. But many people have heard people talk about different things and they despise them and they did not realize they are despising the person. Okay, what when you are to honor, we are pending on a pongea, on a darao, and then a ten at an hour, Kumuki a pomba, umedarao. Or sometimes we grieve for some benefit and we don't get it, and then we get angry. Okay, uh, Sasingine, Vitus Nezatokea, Vilum Tuko Hapa Ivi, Aupati Chakula, Kingi, Naunaka Srika. Okay, so what I'm saying is. Very often we are not sensitive to our sins. Mara nyingi hatuangalifu kwa dhambi zetu. I thank God that he has taught me to be sensitive to my sins. Nafikiria Mungu a a a a amemshawishi kuelewa dhambi zake. And I have, and I handle the sins immediately by the help of God. Dhamia anaitoa mara moja mara tu. And I found that it's possible. Na naona ni rahisi. Now the way how I arrived at this method actually is the method of God, he, how He guided me to repent. So give glory to God for giving me these five steps to victory. There's also a simple fight. Three steps to victory. Uh, First is aware, aware of my sin. And then number two is pray for forgiveness and for strength. And then number three, choose to obey. Because if we know already all sins are destructive, we don't have to go through that again. If we know the biblical teaching already, we don't have to rethink the biblical teaching. And then Okay. So any question? Because what I want to say this 
this is probably new to you. It's not easy to apply it right away.